So in art history, there are pivotal moments that change its direction. For example, the invention of perspective was a large part of driving the Renaissance. Um, similarly, the invention of oil paint in tubes had a big impact on modern art and making art more diverse and uh, distributing it uh, in a more egalitarian way. Probably the most pivotal moment though is in fact the invention of uh, the camera. So a whole other technology, another field if you like. Um, what it did was cause um, art to really question its, its purpose because up until that point um, in large part the purpose of art was to accurately represent reality so a picture of a certain person should look as much as possible like that person a painting of a bowl of apples should look as much as possible like that bowl of apples no matter how far away or close you get to the painting it should look like the thing it's intended to represent and in large part that meant disguising the brushwork, the brush stroke, so that no matter how close you got to the surface of the painting, it should still look like the surface of skin or the surface of an apple, for example. So what the camera did was, um, it, it was able to more accurately and more quickly represent subject matter. And what that forced artists, painters in particular, to question was what their purpose was. If something else had come along and could do their job better than they could, faster, and ultimately more cheaply, uh, what's the point of painting? And this, this really triggers the modern art, this really triggers um, the Impressionist era explicitly the Impressionist era is about painting atmosphere and light but implicitly it's about allowing the brush stroke to show. So previously the brush stroke should be disguised and after the camera um, when it's no longer about representation, when it's now about something other than what you can see, painting something other than the representational and the obvious, um, the brushstroke is allowed to be shown. The other difference um, before and after that moment is that before that moment in the Renaissance and around and post that time, uh, painters often didn't sign their work and certainly not on the front, it was often done on the back because the person most strongly associated with a piece of work was actually the patron or the subject of the work, not the painter. After the camera's invented and then the painter decides what they want to express in a painting, um, signing it becomes more commonplace and what we assume that everyone does today. So what happens is the camera's invented, the painter decides that they want to say something other than the obvious um, and, and this is really about then the painter becoming important in art the painter's ideas becoming the subject matter of art. And so um, the brush stroke being allowed to show, as opposed to being disguised as it was previously, is about the painter saying, I'm here, my brush stroke matters. My brush stroke can be a subject matter for the painting. That's what I was working on, this idea that um, if the brush stroke's allowed to show, then maybe the brush stroke is the subject. That's, to me, the fundamental element of uh, a picture of a painting, in particular, is in fact the brush stroke. So that's what the series was about. It was about um, being a, making the brush stroke the subject and making that more and more explicit and exploring what the brushstroke is about in particular. With most paintings, you're encouraged to stand back and view the composition. And these ones, when I speak to people about it in the gallery, I encourage them to actually step forward and look more closely at the painting and inspect the brushstrokes. 
because they are the subject matter. And when you do, you see, you see the pressure that must have been required to make any particular brushstroke, some uh, uh, stronger and more dramatic than others. You see the change in direction of the brushstroke, um, the different texture of the paint, um, thicker or, or thinner. So I would encourage people to, to step forward and look at the brushstrokes in particular because it, it goes to that idea that um, a hand made this. It's no longer it, are we trying to pretend this is an apple. We are saying this is a painting and the brushstrokes, the subject matter, and a person made the brushstroke. And that's why I called the series when I'd finished making it, um, why I called it Touch Me, because I, I looked at it and I wondered what would someone be thinking who might be walking past the gallery and look through the window and this caught their eye. At a time when we weren't, um, when being touched was being discouraged and became a big deal, um, this, that person might be thinking, touch me. And when you look at the pictures, when you look at the paintings, you can see evidence of the touch of each brush stroke is evidence of the brush that made it the hand that held the brush, the arm and the person. So each brush stroke is actually a mark of a person. One of, one of the metaphors that I use when I talk to people about it is, um, imagine for example, let, let's say you go to the shops and you buy a cheesecake made in a factory. It's perfect, it's perfectly smooth. There's no evidence of how it was made. Uh, if you go to your grandmother's house, for example, and she makes you a cheesecake, there's evidence that a person made it. The edges are ragged, there's marks on the top where the knife was to spread the cheesecake. So the handmadeness of it is evident in it. And that's like these paintings, the, that it's made by a hand is evident. It's not meant to look smooth and like something else. It, it's about the touch of the artist. And if you're looking at it and you're sensitive to these things and you look closely at the brush strokes, you can see the touch of the other person. And if that's what you are hoping to, to experience, to be touched, instead of being able to do it in a tactile, physical way, maybe it can be done visually. Well, there's, there's 13 paintings in the series, I started, the first two were done very spontaneously actually. Um, I had paint from another painting and started applying it and, and sort of intuitively got into this idea of just doing brush strokes. I had been looking at the work of Haim Soutine, who was a post-impressionist, and of Helen Frankenthaler, who was very unapologetic and very present as a person as an, and as an artist. And I was really trying to incorporate this, both of the spirits of those people into the way I operate, to, to be more spontaneous, more present, more intense, um, to really embrace that rather than to be hesitant in painting. So I used the paint that I already had on canvases that I had and just, just, focused on applying paint, I was saying to myself, your job is to apply paint, your job is to apply paint, and so just apply paint. And then it became about the brush stroke. So, so it was very intuitively heading towards this idea of the brush stroke as the subject, um, and the hand and the arm and the person who made it, and that someone else might read that. Um, so the first two were very, very spontaneous, and the others, when I when, once I'd stepped back from the first two, and I thought, wow, that's actually something, the others are further expressions of that, repeating that experience. And so I experimented with smaller pieces, larger pieces, vertical, horizontal. And once I thought I, I'd really sort of got into the, this idea of just the brushstroke, um, came up with the final piece, the biggest piece in the series, as sort of the ultimate expression of this over a large area of canvas. I think people are actually really interested in that idea 
of the difference between pre-camera and post-camera. When I explain it to um, collectors in the gallery, they're, they're really intrigued by that contrast between pre-camera hyper-representation and smoothness and disguising the artist and disguising the brushstroke versus what happens after that, which is exp the exploration of the, of the artist's presence as the person making the picture and as a presence in the picture, sort of implied and inherent in the picture. So people really like that, to understand that and know about that. And then they are encouraged to step closer to the picture and inspect the brush strokes and try to get a sense of what must have happened to make the brush strokes happen and how they vary. That on the surface it just looks like a field of brush strokes, but when, when you look carefully, they vary in size and colour, obviously, and direction and pressure. Um, so it becomes a really interesting experience to look at the painting more carefully. I think people expect to look at pictures and understand them quite quickly and for there not to be any effort required and they're attractive so you can look at it just from an aesthetic point of view but if you want to engage more fully if you want to have a, a, a more of an experience of the picture of, of any of the paintings then look more closely and the more, as with most things in life, the more you put in, the more you'll get out of it.